Hello, I'm going, to, I'm going to do a walkthrough here of the Virtual Earthquake Lab. Try to clarify some points here. There is a lot of reading. Most of it reinforces some ideas that were presented in the textbook, so hopefully that helps. The instructions mentioned to scroll down and start by clicking on Execute Virtual Earthquake. We'll do that. Let's take a look here at this graph. This is really important because you're going to be looking at three seismograms, one each, from three different seismic stations. So seismographs are recording shaking of the Earth. And what you get out is a printout like this. P waves are faster than S waves. So from the earthquake, the first to arrive any seismic station is going to be the P wave. Okay, so this one comes in here, and that's where the graph starts at zero. And then it takes the slower wave longer to get there. You know, how much longer? Well, there's a certain number of seconds associated with that. Okay, and I need to choose one area, and I'm going ahead and go, I'm going to go ahead and do the San Francisco area. When you do yours, you need to do Number two, three, or four. Okay, a map of the area. Here's San Francisco here. Three of these places will have a seismic station, and we'll be looking at a graph from those. Okay, so we're going to be measuring SP intervals, and we're going to view the seismograms of the three seismograph locations that we'll be using. Okay, and here they are, Eureka, California, Elko, Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada. If you want to see where those are exactly, you can go back and look at the map or wait just a little bit and we will see maps again. Okay, so the zero is always recording where the first P wave came in. I should say when it came in. That'll be our zero mark. And we take a look at these lines. Each Space between small lines, the blue lines, is worth two seconds. And so here, it looks like you know, this black line represents 50. And that first S wave looks to be just one blue line to the left of the 50. That's 50 minus 2. So that would be 48 seconds. And at Alpo, Nevada, first P wave. S wave. So it looks like that is, it's, it's kind of hard to see. You know, you might want to zoom in a little bit, but if you're within a second or two, maybe three, it's going to come out pretty good for you. So I'm going to say 72, 73 might be a good guess also. We'll try that one. And then Las Vegas, Nevada, P wave, S wave, way over here. So it's 60 and 2, 4, maybe 65. Okay, now it says convert the SP interval because we know what the number of seconds is between those, but what distance does that represent? We want to know how far these different stations are from the epicenter of the earthquake, where the earthquake started. Convert SP interval. So here is a graph that shows the S waves and P waves. We have time on the y-axis, distance on the x-axis. And what this is, the first two lines here, the upper two lines are showing, would be the travel rate of S waves and P waves. We said S waves were slower. And sure enough, in a given length of time, let's say after 40 seconds, 40 seconds since the earthquake generated these waves, the S wave is going to have gone Look at the distance here, you know, around 180 kilometers, while the P wave has gone about 300 kilometers. What we're most interested in from these seismograms is that SP interval. And so the only graph you're going to need is that line right there, and they've expanded it down here so it's easier to read. Okay, so SP interval 
Eureka, California was 48 seconds, we said. So we look this time between 40 and 50. We have this other black line in between for 45. So 48 is two lines, we go to 50. And 48 seconds. Looks like I'm having a hard time seeing it. Just a minute. Okay, so 48 seconds follow that blue line across. And it intersects the black line right there. We drop down. That will be 480 kilometers. That. Elko, Nevada was 72 seconds. So way up here. So two lines above 70. That intersects right about there, about the 700 kilometers. And Las Vegas, 65 seconds. That intersects us a little before that blue line right there. Two to the right of 600. So 620, 640, I'm going to call it 638. And you can, you know, fine tune this as much as you want. But let's see, just doing it quickly like that, how close I got. How will we know? You'll see. Find the epicenter. Okay. Here's a purple line, a green line, a yellow line. And they are intersecting right the south side of San Francisco. They have not met in a single dot, but that's a pretty small area there. Okay, so it says, uh, actually it says very close. How well did you do? The three circles do not intersect at a point, but they are close to one. It is likely you may have made a slight error in measuring either the SP interval or in using the travel time curves. Click the Remeasure button below to try again, or click the actual epicenter button for the correct SP and epicenter distance date for this earthquake. So very close is pretty good. If you were in a hurry, you could take that. Okay, Remeasure, view the true epicenter. Okay, this is where I found. Right about there. That was pretty close. Okay, I'm going to go back one. Okay, I had a little glitch there, but uh, you see that this was pretty close, and it said I had a chance to try it again. You can either choose to do it again and fine-tune that, or you can go on. If it's close, and this did say you know, it was very close, just not perfect. You can go with that. The second part is to compute Richter magnitude. And before I go on to that, let's just think a little bit about what this means with these different size circles. So the epicenter is at the point. These lines are easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and use this. And it has a point where the hull intersect. Okay, so what does this mean? Eureka. And we found that because of the S&P waves that came in to the seismic station at Eureka, California, we determined that the distance to the epicenter was 478 kilometers. And there is a scale of miles down here. This was done for us. We didn't have to draw this at a, a circle at a certain, with a certain diameter, but it did it for us. So somewhere along this line, this is the first circle we had. Pretend you don't see the green, you don't see the blue or purple line here. When this first started out, this would be the first circle. It goes it will go clear around somewhere on that line is where the epicenter was. Okay, and the next one we did was, let's see, we did Eureka and Elko, which is right here. Okay, so this is the one that has the blue line, 702 kilometers from the epicenter. So if you drew this line next, 
which is the order we were doing them in. And there's a circle here somewhere along that circle is where the epicenter was. When you have two circles, then they intersect in two points, one here, and there'd be another one up here that we can't see. So we have it narrowed down. And that's where the third circle comes in, one that we are measuring from Las Vegas. That is 16, I'm sorry, 624 kilometers. And that gives us our third circle and that intersection point for all three. So that's where the epicenter is. Okay, let's go on, take a look at Richter magnitude very quickly. This explains about Richter magnitude, which the textbook also did. What we're going to be looking at here is the maximum amplitude of the S wave. Okay, so these first S waves here, the tallest one, that's what this is using. And it talks about how you would use this. Um, it's really complicated, and this graph has simplified it for us. So if we had a distance from the epicenter of 100 kilometers and measured an amplitude, I'll skip over this one a minute, that's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, we had an amplitude of just one millimeter on the seismograph, which I have to go back for, but okay, all those little zigzagging lines. Okay, draw a line from the left here to the number on the right that we determined, where it crosses the middle line, that's your, that's your magnitude on the Richter scale. Okay, if from 100 kilometers, we had an amplitude of 10 millimeters, you draw a line from 100 to 10, and where it crosses, the middle line is going to be about a four. That is going to be the magnitude, magnitude of four. Okay, and this is a logarithmic scale, and so you can put together the pieces there and see how that all works out. When it says go to the next page, okay, you need to measure the S wave amplitudes. So you're going to see where, where do you come across here for our amplitude? How many millimeters? Looks like it's going to be about 280. I think that's the one they gave. Uh, 280 here. It's going to be much smaller here. You know, something over 50. And right around 100 for this one. Fill in the numbers and then submit. The reason why I can't do this, this is the example, right? And I'm going to put 52 there. And I'm going to put 280 there. And... Okay, and that's what it's done. It's taken those numbers, draw the lines that I talked about. It comes up to be about 7.2. Remember, they didn't meet in an exact circle, so they're probably not going to cross all in one exact point here either. So 7.2, 7.3. Let's see, if we put in 7.2, it's going to like that. Okay, it says you've done a great job. Okay, it gives you a little information about the actual earthquake that has happened there. And you can get your certificate, fill in your information, and click. I hope this has been helpful. It was uh, kind of a one pass through to get it finished before it's too late in the evening. And if you need more, just let me know.